Hey there everyone, uh, this is your Yankee Messiah here with you, and I am going to be uh, giving my uh, WWE WrestleMania 38 Night 1 predictions. Of course, you know I'm not the big WWE fan like I used to be, with all of the new pro wrestling alternatives out there right now, but I figured I'd do a preview of this since, you know, WrestleMania is the bigger show, and... With WrestleMania week, it's really more of a celebration of pro wrestling. So, that's why I'm doing this. So, um, of course, you know, the pay-per-view or uh, the network special will be live uh, this Saturday night. Uh, night one, as I mentioned, from AT&T Stadium in Arlington, Texas. Uh, Arlington, uh, Texas, excuse me. So, um, overall... Uh, you know me, I'm not really looking forward to this WrestleMania. Um, there are three matches out there that I am excited about. So I'll be talking about those matches um, throughout the preview. Um, whether it's uh, night one, night two. Night two, I will say this. There are two matches that I'm actually looking forward to. Uh, so let's get started with night one here. So you got the Raw Women's Championship on the line. You got... Becky Lynch going up against Bianca Belair. Um, I really want to be excited about this. I mean, I really do. Because with all of this debate out there in the WWE universe, uh, these are two of the top WWE female stars out there. But you know what WWE these days, and you know why I go on rant. Uh, when it comes to the WWE, because if you're calling this the most stupendous WrestleMania out there, this hair um, had less than a spectacular build, um, coupled with their tendency to provide, you know, fuck finishes, and it's really hard for me to get excited about this match. Because this match has the potential to steal uh, both nights of WrestleMania. I mean, it's been a few, you know, six months in the making because we all remember what happened in August. Becky Lynch came back, humiliated Bianca Belair to become the Raw Women's Champion. And it was a squash match. So, you know, people say, you know, let it play out. Let it play out. So, I have let it play out. And now that we're in WrestleMania, I, I mean, I will say it has one of the better builds on this card. But still, it's lacking. You know, Becky Lynch, you know, she's been this... uh mid cast and really becoming this cocky character. You know, she's not the Becky Lynch that we all know before she left to have her baby. But when you look at Bianca Belair, Bianca Belair has looked stronger than most of the top baby faces in recent memory. No, that's a low bar. I mean, this storyline has been dragged out without much substance. Bianca Belair needs to win here. And the reason why I say that is because that will push her to a whole new level. But you know that this is WWE. And WWE likes to fuck things up. Excuse me. Be, uh, Becky Lynch is going to win this match. I have a feeling Becky Lynch is going to win this. Um, I do see this feud continue to play out. Because if you saw Monday Night Raw this past Monday. You had Bianca Belair uh, cut Becky Lynch's hair. Like pieces of it. That's going to lead to believe me that. At WrestleMania Backlash, which is going to be in my own backyard in Providence, Rhode Island. 
I think they're going to have a hair versus hair match. And it's just going to lead to freaking Bianca Belair winning that match. Um, I can't see WWE cut Bianca Belair's hair. If they do, that character is basically dead. Then you got um, The Miz and Logan Paul versus The Mysterios. This has been a boring feud. I really don't care about it. Um, WWE, I mean, they have given the talentless offspring of Rey Mysterio more opportunities than ever of their secondary champions. This is why, I mean, I have been going on rants about this. You got Dominic Mysterio. I, I can't call him a kid. All right? I know Dominic Mysterio is 24 years old. Going on 25. But you're going in front of 50,000 fans. 50,000 fans. Why couldn't you give this spot to a, a Finn Balor going up against Damian Priest? Why couldn't you even give it to Ricochet? The build to this match is nothing. We haven't seen before, and I could care less about it. It's a waste of a spot. Uh, it, it's a waste of Rey Mysterio's legacy. I gotta go with Rey Mysterio and the Sun to win this match, Dominic. Um, I really don't want to talk about this, okay? So, I'm just gonna move on. Then you got uh, Seth Rollins going up against uh, To Be Announced. This is the match that all wrestling fans, whether you're a freaking AEW mark, whether you're a pro wrestling fan, WWE fan, whatever. And it's because of the fact that you got the potential debut of Cody Rhodes. I mean, the build to this has involved the annoying antics of Seth freaking Rollins. Because he does his best to catch the eye of next year's talented spotter. Seth Rollins, to me, is an accomplished in-ring talent. And you know that he's going to deliver inside the ring when Cody, Mo when Cody Rose makes his debut. But as a character, I fucking hate the Seth Rollins Freaking, like, Seth freaking Rollins. I hate what they've done to Seth Rollins. They made him look like a fucking complete tool. You know this opponent of his has to be Cody Rhodes. If it's not Cody Rhodes, then you know WWE is going to get bashed by critics like me and everybody that's in the YWC. I think that this is going to be a, serve, uh, a swerve um, because of the news that um, is being rumored that Shane McMahon is going to be at WrestleMania 38. I think what happens here is that Shane McMahon comes out. It's going to be similar to what we saw at SummerSlam. Uh, when Bianca Belair went up against, was supposed to go up against Sasha Banks, and then all of a sudden Becky Lynch um, made her return. I think it's going to be that situation right there. But Cody Rhodes is easily the best bet. Um, never know. You know, Shane McMahon is the second choice. Uh, I don't really see it. I really don't see The Undertaker coming back to face Seth Rollins. 
John Cena, you know, that's another possibility. But whoever is going to be facing Seth Rollins, that's going to be the winner of this match. And to me, it's going to be Cody Rhodes. Then you got uh, Drew McIntyre going up against Happy Corbin. I can't even stand saying that. <sighs> Drew McIntyre, man. Oh, holy fucking shit, man. This guy has fallen ever since he beat Brock Lesnar two years ago at this event, which I call the pandemic WrestleMania. And now he's in a fucking never-ending feud with Baron Coburn and his uh, lackey, whatever the fuck his name is. I, I don't even know. I don't think anyone has ever wished for a happy Corbin match at any stage of their career. And I've seen enough of Corbin to never want to see another match of his ever again. I'll give Corbin the benefit of the doubt here. I admire how he has navigated the WWE game to the point where he's just this uh, featured singles match wrestler at WrestleMania. You know Drew McIntyre is going to win this match. Because the losers of this feud has been Happy Corbin and um, his sidekick. It's a match nobody wants in the end. And really nobody's going to care about it. So moving on. Next up, you got the SmackDown Tag Team Championships on the line. You got the Usos going up against... Rick Bob's Rick Boggs and Shinsuke Nakamura. Um you know how modern WWE storytelling is here. Uh you got three talented wrestlers here. I'll tell you all that right now. In the Usos, Shinsuke Nakamura, and you got Rick Boggs in there as well. Um Honestly. This match can be good. Because the Usos, they're decent. And it's just Nakamura. But in the end, there, re there really is no real substance in this match. I mean, it's a forgettable build. And the match, it's just, it's not going to be memorable. You know who's going to win this because obviously you know on Sunday it's going to be the coronation of Roman Reigns. And you want to keep that freaking bloodline, that little fraction of theirs, the most dominant in the WWE right now. You got to go with the Usos here. Alrighty. SmackDown Women's Championship on the line. Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey. This is the women's version of what would have happened at WrestleMania 30. And why do I mention WrestleMania 30? Because you would have gotten Randy Orton versus Dave Batista. But thankfully, we got something very memorable that night when uh, it was a triple threat match that featured Daniel Bryan. Now you go back eight years later. You got Charlotte Flair being the Randy Orton. You got Ronda Rousey as the Dave Batista. I could care less about this match. You know WWE, what they're going to try to do. They're going to try to make it important. It, but 
in reality, it's not going to be important. Nobody cares about this match. I don't even fucking care about this match. Because I have no real desire to see who wins this match. And I really could care less what direction WWE is going to go in. Ronda Rousey is most likely going to win this match. You know me. I got zero interests. Um, but I expect it to be a decent affair. But it's going to be a boring, heatless affair. And then I got to talk about the KO show. Because that's really what is really going to be the important essence. Of this night one at WrestleMania. It, it's a non-match. Involving a guy. Who's been retired for. What? 19 years already? A 19 year legend. Is headlining WrestleMania. While I have enjoyed Kevin Owens. By the numbers build. To an extent. But this segment. Headline in Wrestlemania 38. It shows. How removed. Modern day WWE is from. When. It was the product that I loved. When it was. You know when it was the attitude era. You know. The attitude era. I always say this. It set the bar. I could say the same thing about the ruthless aggression era. I feel like this is going to be a grander version of something that we see on Monday Night Raw. And it's the same shtick that Stone Cold Steve Austin has done over the past 19 years. He's going to come in. You're going to hear the glass shatter. You're going to have all the fans mock. I mean, I'll be mocking. I'm a big Stone Cold Steve Austin guy. I really am. I'm not knocking Stone Cold Steve Austin. Let me just say that right now, all the WWE Shields are going to be watching this, and they're going to be saying, oh, uh, he he knocking on Stone Cold Steve Austin. Oh, he, he hates Stone Cold Steve Austin. I don't. He's going to come in, he's going to pose, he's going to put his hands up like this, then he's going to flip the bird at Kevin Owens, and then he's going to humiliate Kevin Owens with the what chant. Then he's going to give Kevin Owens the stunner, and then he's going to drink his beer. That's what you're going to see this Saturday. The build to this has been lazy. Uh, with Kevin Owens doing his best to make the most out of the situation. This guy is so capable of doing so much more. This right here is Kevin Owens trying to get a good payday. And you, if you're a wrestler in the WWE, like, right now. Like, why did you sign that contract to stay with WWE? And now you're sharing a ring with one of your heroes without throwing his body off a ladder or the crazy stunts that Kevin Owens has done in past WrestleManias. My expectations are rock bottom. It's not going to be half as bad as I think it's, I think it's going to be. But as a main event, why is it a main event? Really? Why is this a main event? Thank God, you know, I will say thank God Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair is not the main event because that's what I was thinking 
was going to be the main event night one of WrestleMania. This one, um, this ain't going to be a match. And I know there's rumors around there, oh, they're going to try to get Stone Cold to get back into wrestling because that's what the Crown Prince wants. Um, because WWE is going back to Saudi Arabia in the fall. Listen, people. He is not going to wrestle again. The guy's had neck issues. The guy has knee issues. You will never see Stone Cold Steve Austin in a match again. I'll tell you all that right now. This is just a segment. And it's for Stone Cold Steve Austin to be put over. All right. So that is the end of my night one WrestleMania predictions. I'm going to try to get into more um, predictions later on this week at, or as we get into the end of the week. Um, I want to try to get into uh, the Super Card of Honor. I want to try to get into, um, what is it? Uh, the GCW shows. Um, the one I'm looking forward to is the Spring Break show. Which I think is going to be tomorrow night um, at 8 o'clock. And then you got uh, part 2 um, after midnight. So there is a... I mean, I will tell you this. is going to be a lot of wrestling to watch uh, these next two days. I'm looking forward to GCW and uh, Ring of Honor. So till then, this is your, your Yankee Messiah out. Um, I'm out. Peace.